Today we'll begin a new topic, which is viscous effects and aerodynamic flows. So while we've introduced uh, boundary layers and other viscous effects in your, say, third year food mechanics course, the specific ways that they can, those concepts can be applied to aerodynamic flow modeling um, are the focus of what we're going to look at here. So consider how we've modeled viscous effects in aerodynamic flows so far. So if we had a lifting body, then we had vortex sheets. on the surface of the body and this gave zero drag coefficient um, but by applying the cutter condition we were able to get a non-zero lift and for non-lifting bodies We didn't have any way of capturing viscous effects at all. Now, keeping in mind that for lifting bodies like airflows, the goal was to capture the vorticity in the boundary layer, which gave rise to the lift. And that was why we used this vortex sheet on the surface approach. So doing that accounted for one effect of the boundary layer. So the vortex sheet. gives the boundary layer vorticity but neglects skin friction which comes from the no slip condition in viscous flows as well as changes in the flow outside the boundary layer that are caused by the boundary layer having a finite thickness since BL has finite thickness. And these are the two mechanisms that give rise to profile drag. So now we'll consider the case of the actual boundary layer flow and compare to this previous model. And for now, we're not yet going to worry about how one would compute the skin friction, but we will look at what the boundary layer in reality changes in the flow outside of it due to its finite thickness. So let's call the potential flow that's produced by placing the vortex sheets on the body surface, the simple equivalent inviscid flow. So the simple equivalent inviscid flow is the potential flow with the vortex sheet on the body surface. So this is what we've dealt with up to now um, when we were thinking about panel methods um, or other approaches for uh, determining a lift on uh, something like an airfoil. So to start looking at this in more detail, let's simplify and restrict ourselves to 2D incompressible flows. All these results generalize to 3D and compressible flows, um, but it's going to make things much easier to consider only the simpler case, and it'll get across all the conceptual ideas, which is the main purpose of this discussion. So under these simplifying assumptions, the simple EIF is a potential flow where the pressure is governed by Bernoulli's equation.
So PI, which is the inviscid pressure field at some location SN, and I'll explain these coordinates in a moment, is the free stream pressure P infinity plus the free stream dynamic pressure rho V infinity squared minus the local velocity or the local dynamic pressure one half rho u i squared plus v i squared. So u i and v i are the inviscid velocity components, p i is the inviscid pressure field, and the coordinate system s n is defined along the body or vortex sheet surface. So if this is the surface at some point S is along the surface, and N is normal to it. So UI is the S velocity, and VI is the N velocity. So due to this definition, at the wall, we get VI zero.